Welcome back to my video everyone. This is WinFat. In this video, we will compare the best jewelry software. I'm not going to compare all of the software, of course, but I'm going to compare the most like the most famous one, which is Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros 3D is the most used software in manufacturing jewelry because it is affordable and easy to use. But anyway guys, I'm going to stop you guys right here and tell you what is the best software for jewelry. The best software is ZBrush. That's it guys, ZBrush. If you have followed me guys, I made videos like teaching rhinoceros like jewelry design, but I have totally stopped after using ZBrush. And the reason why, and remember, that word guys is IMM brush. Of course, this is not the only reason why uh, ZBrush it is the best, but the IMM brush is unique and only available in ZBrush. All right, now let's talk about the main difference between like the two uh, software. First of all, Rhinoceros is a modeling software, a traditional modeling software. And ZBrush, on the other hand, is a sculpting software. So what does it mean? Let me make it simple. When we design something in Rhino, we usually start with a curves. And from a curves, we turn it to a primitive, an object, a 3D object. On ZBrush, we start directly from an object. And then we do whatever we want to do. So in Rhino, you want to make a cube, you have to make a square of with the lines you know and then extrude it to then like create your cube in zbrush you will start with your cube right away but now let's say that you want a cube but slightly deformed so in rhino again you will have to make your line a spider line or whatever and make it like quite deformed and then extrude and then you have your cube your deformed cube but in zbrush you have your cube then you simply take a move brush for example and simply like deform that cube all right so of course people will say that i'm comparing apple and oranges but i'm not it's more like comparing two type of oranges because even though that zbrush is a sculpting software but there is a huge misconception for those who haven't uh, used ZBrush. The truth is that you don't have to be a sculptor to use ZBrush because ZBrush allows you to do both. Compared to Rhino or any other CAD software out there, you cannot be modeling and sculpting. So we do not necessarily need to be sculpting. And I'm talking about real sculpting, not like moving stuff around and call myself a sculptor. I'm talking about the real art form of sculpting. But it is fine because in a production and commercial situation, we do not have the time to be sculpting all day. Let me give you a simple explanation. We see a lot of people selling STL files of uh, you know 3D printing models and sell it somewhere online. What we'll usually do is get a base mesh for example, Bruce Lee, which is already been made by someone else on the internet. We simply get Bruce Lee and pose it in a like a fighting stance, generate some clothes and a backgrounds and call it a day. Instead of us spending time uh, sculpting Bruce Lee from scratch. And this applies to designing jewelry too. And I'm going to give you an example shortly. So we can make a ring with the size you need and simply get like some ornaments design and place it on our ring and call it a day. All right, everyone. So here I am on the cjtrader.com website, which is quite famous to get some jewelry 3D models. And on this website, we are going to get a ring. And now I'm going to click on free to get some free models. And I'm going to select this simple ring as an example and simply download it. 
All right, now I have my Rhinoceros 3D software open along with my ZBrush. I'm going to import the model that I have just downloaded. And here's the thing guys, Rhinoceros does not support other types of files than 3DM format, which is simply Rhinoceros files. And as you can see, like the polygons, the topology is just a mess and it's really not usable. So our options are limited. What we can do, we can of course scale like that and other simple deformation. But if you want, for example, to modify certain part like here, you will have a hard time. You can of course like simply place some like gemstones for example and call it a day. All right, now in ZBrush, it's also the same thing. When we import like models as an SDL or you know some free models, it is usually not like sculptable. If you try to move, for example, and you see the artifacts, the topology, the polygons are just off. If you don't understand what a polygon is, you can check my previous video. So now here is where ZBrush Excel. We can't sculpt on surface like that. However, we can work around and I'm going to show you. We can use this function called the Dynamesh. So what does the Dynamesh do? It's simply like reconstruct the polygons on our surface. It turns our previous polygons into some little squares like that. Now, what I can do, of course, I can sculpt on it or I can Z-remesh it to get a better topology. And this everyone, you simply can't do in Rhinoceros. Of course guys, Rhinoceros is a beautiful software, don't get me wrong. It's great to design some simple stuff, some simple ring like Eternity Band Ring, Halo Ring, Solitaire Rings. And hear me out, in the beginning of my jewelry business, I was designing my products uh, such as my Eternity Band Ring, my Solitaire Band Ring and send it to uh, manufacturing but it was just a mistake because all of those models were already available online so instead of me like designing modeling all of those uh, models I could simply with one click and spend a few bucks and get it so if you were about to design your jewelry you better go off and design some really creative design of course, this is not a career advice and Rhinoceros has some great function such as uh, Array Polar for example and ZBrush also has this function, a similar function like Array Polar but to be honest, I, I have not uh, have to use it once because uh, I'm going to show you my way and it, I think it is a better way and it is simply using an IMM brush. All right, so here I have a base mesh ring, as you can see. And if I wanted, for example, to place some gemstones all over uh, around my ring, like uh, the polar array function in uh, Rhinoceros, I'm going to use the IMM brush. And here I have like two separate polygroups. I'm going to select those polygroups and generate a stroke, which will be placed on the middle. So I'm going to select an IMM brush, for example, and then simply click on the stroke and generate my gemstones. Of course, I can adjust it, for example, make the gemstones a little bit deeper on the ring. And tada, guys. And the good thing about this method is that this is a brush, which means that you can apply this technique on a specific area like this band with some curvature. Of course guys, there is more function rather than just the IMM brush. For example, you can use an alpha. Just like that, boom guys. Like how hard it is for you to make this type of thing in Rhinoceros or Matrix Gold. And of course, this is not it. For example, you can apply some texture on your surface just like that without even like sculpting. Some people have some bold statement about Rhinoceros being a more precise software, but this is really not true. 
It's like judging other software as not on point. Measurement stuff in ZBrush can be a little bit uh, confusing, but it is not less precise than any other software, CAD software out there. And let me show you. All right, now, if I wanted to set my gems with my IMM brush at a three millimeter gemstones, for example, I could simply set the size of my IMM brush for three millimeter and set the draw size. Now, when I click on it, boom, and let's measure this thing. And if you see the measurement on the top, which is 2.9995, and it can be a little bit confusing, but it is three millimeter. It just hasn't been rounded off. And ZBrush is really famous for making stuff like looking complicated. But this type of measurement for me is more precise. Just because it doesn't round off to a three millimeter unit doesn't mean it is less precise. All right, now let's talk about the cons of ZBrush. The first cons is for most uh, the subscription because nowadays we have Blender, which is a free software. But a lot of people overlook at something. They have a rich history, which means there will be more resources available. For example, there will be more tutorials out there from like famous uh, 3D artists who have built and construct a workflow. They have figured stuff. They have figured and solved problems that you guys don't have to. And people, they have to eat. They have to get paid to maintain the software. You guys complaining about paying a subscription, but you guys go to work and get paid by a company for a service. The second one, I think, will be the computer. You need a decent computer. Of course, you can use ZBrush with a low spec computer, but when you get a serious project, a more serious project with millions of polygons, it will become laggy and really uncomfortable to work with. Then you will have to use some methods like decimation. You will have to add like more thinking and more work on top of your work. The last one is of course uh, the deep learning curves. ZBrush is one of the most like hard software to learn. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe and also subscribe to my Patreon. I'm building a learning course for beginners that teach you all the functions you need. And I'm sharing like all everything, all my brushes, all the material I have like gathered over the years. And also I'm sharing all my experience, all my knowledge that I spent like thousands of dollars and a lot of time. But anyway guys, thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.